Hello there. Just want to take a few minutes to share with you some really important things concerning prayer. You know, when you learn to pray effectively, your whole life is changed forever. You know, in the book of Ephesians, in chapter 6, as you read through it, there's three things that are linked together. In the beginning, it says we wrestle against principalities and powers, and it speaks about the whole scenario of spiritual warfare. And then very interestingly, in verse 16 of Ephesians 6, it says, Above all, take up the shield of faith, with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the evil one. And it shows you how important in spiritual warfare faith is. Because with the shield of faith, you're able to block so many of the things that the devil is trying to do to ruin your life. And then at the end of this passage, having spoken about spiritual warfare, having spoken about faith, it then says pray. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. And if you look at this in the Amplified Version, you see that it says to pray with all different kinds of prayer, all manner of prayer. And uh, many times as Christians we don't realize that there are so many different kinds of prayer. You know, there's the prayer of faith, there's praying in tongues, there's the prayer of agreement, there's the prayer of consecration and dedication, there's the prayer of worship, there's the prayer of intercession. And all these prayers have different uh, principles that govern them and we need to understand that. You know, for instance, uh, like when you're playing a game. When you play tennis, you hit the ball and the ball is meant to go over the net. And uh, then you do well if you keep hitting the ball over the net. But when you play soccer, football, you're meant to hit the ball or kick the ball in the net. Uh, if you kick the ball over the net, you're going to lose the game. So different rules. And then uh, also when you play tennis, <coughs> I used to be a tennis player years ago. <coughs> when you hit the ball and it lands on the line, that is in. But when you play squash or racquetball, squash, uh, you hit the ball and it's on the line, it's out. So there's so many different rules that govern different types of games. And similarly, there's different types of principles that govern different types of prayer. The prayer of agreement is, operates in a certain way according to the teachings of Scripture. The prayer of faith operates in a certain way. Praying in tongues operates in a certain way. And you know, it says in 1 Corinthians 14, Paul says in 1 Corinthians 14 and verse 14, he says, When I pray uh, in a tongue, he said, My spirit prays, but my mind is unfruitful. He says, What is the conclusion then? I will pray with the spirit, and I will also pray with the understanding. So over here, Paul says he prays in a tongue, in an unknown tongue, and his spirit is praying. So this is a valid form of prayer. Uh, and it's a type of prayer we use a lot in our prayer lives. Often when I'm praying on my own, I pray in English, I read my Bible, <clears throat> I pray according to the Lord's Prayer format, and then I pray in tongues. So praying in tongues is a, is a valid form of prayer. And then you have the prayer of agreement. And the Bible says if two people agree as touching anything, it shall be done for them by my Father in heaven. I remember once uh, being back home in Wembley in England, my car would not start. And uh, I tried everything to get this car started and uh, I was urgently needed to be at an appointment, you know, a few miles away. And I couldn't get the car started. I prayed and it just wouldn't start. And then I saw my dad coming down the road to visit me. He was a military man. He knew all about cars, used to fix his own car. And I said, Dad, can you help me? Please fix my car. He came over to me, uh, he opened the bonnet, he tried everything he knew, but he could not get the car working. I was frustrated, I didn't know what to do. And then I saw my best friend Doug Williams walking down the road, a fellow minister. We went to Bible school together and uh, I said, Doug, my car won't start. I said, will you agree with me according to the scriptures that uh, the car will start? So he said, yeah, I'll agree with you. So we got the Bible out, we went to Matthew chapter 18 and we read the scripture literally standing over the car where it said in verse 19 again, Matthew 18 and verse 19, again I say to you, if two of you agree on earth concerning anything that they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. 
and we said thank you Lord and then we held hands and uh, we asked God and we agreed together that the car would start and I got in the car my father had tried everything we tried everything we knew we turned the ignition many times I put the key in turned it and the car started the prayer of agreement is a very powerful prayer where two people agree together in prayer according to the scriptures and I've prayed it many times with my wife Denise with my fellow ministers sometimes you know you just feel that your faith level is not high enough you need someone to join their faith with your faith so that your faith is multiplied and two people agree together and something happens yes it's true that not every time I've agreed with someone my car started I, I don't think I've done that on any other occasion but on many occasions as we've agreed together in prayer over important issues uh, God has done what he said he would do and so this is an important part of prayer and it's got some real principles that govern it you know when you are praying the prayer of agreement there's certain things that you need to understand and um, I've even prayed this prayer with my wife prayed this prayer with my daughter once at an airport and you need to understand that when you are praying the prayer of agreement you've got to find someone who's of similar faith to you someone who believes the same way you do and then you find the scripture uh, you know that promises the answer and then the two of you agree together in prayer but you know there's some important things you need to do after you've prayed first of all you need to make sure that what you're agreeing for is within God's will for you you cannot just pray for anything that God has not promised you. Well, you have to pray according to the Word of God. And number one, you need to pray uh, according to the Word of God. Number two, you need to uh, make sure that the person who's agreeing with you understands the principles of faith, that they don't agree with you and then go away and cancel the prayer by talking negatively. And then after you've prayed this prayer of agreement, you know, uh, and you've based your prayer on a scripture, you fully expect what you prayed for to come to pass that's faith faith is the evidence of things hoped for the assur assurance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen and you guard your words and you guard your mind and your imagination the devil will try to get you to imagine that nothing's going to happen and you throw those pictures out you use your imagination for your faith and don't let the devil play with your imagination it says in the book of Genesis that God destroyed the world because the imagination of people had been polluted. We need to use our imagination for faith and with the Word of God. So it's very simple. The prayer of agreement, it's wonderful. Uh, married couples can pray together. Ministers can pray together. People of like mind can agree together for something and God will come through. So there's so many different types of prayer. You know, that's just one example. There's also the prayer of faith. There's the prayer of intercession where you are praying for someone else. You know, we're going to look at the prayer of faith and how that works. But when you're praying the prayer of faith, there's just you, the Word of God, and God in the equation. So it's just you and God and the Word. But when you're praying the prayer of intercession, there's you, God, the Word, and the other person. So the, the, the dynamic of it changes because in the equation you've got what that person wants and God cannot overrule their wills he can influence them to make the right decision but he won't overrule their wills so intercessory prayer goes on we take the person we're praying for with one hand we take God with the other hand and we join them together and we pray for that person but that person will change as they respond to God so intercessory prayer has a different dynamic you can't uh, treat it the same as the prayer of faith that you are praying over your own life and so you see the dynamics are different so that's why the Bible talks about different kinds of prayer and we'll in another section we'll look at the prayer of consecration and dedication and the prayer of faith how they too are different remember in tennis on the line is in in squash on the line is out so we need to understand the different types of prayer and how they work God bless you